Hello everyone! Today I'm going to be talking about the risk of opportunistic infections. Opportunistic infections are infections that are likely to occur because of a weak immune system. They can be caused by bacteria, fungi, viruses, or any type of microorganism that enters the body and causes an infection. Opportunistic infections happen because of a weak immune system if an individual is not able to fight an infection. Properly, that individual is going to be known to, to be immunocompromised or immunodeficient. An inability to maintain homeostasis, a suppressed or impaired immune system, such as individuals living with autoimmune diseases that voluntarily have their immune system under control to avoid further damage of, by their immune system. HIV positive cancer patients, immunocompromised and immunosuppressed patients are in a higher risk of developing opportunistic infections. Other factors that can increase the risk are constant stress due to the high levels of cortisol that can inhibit the immune system. The immune system has a variety of ways of protecting the body from infection and it's composed of the innate immunity, but it's the more general type of immunity composed of the first line barriers such as the skin and mucous membranes, the second line barriers that is composed of cells that, that can phagocytize bacteria, including the fever and inflammation response. The adaptive immunity is composed of lymphocytes that target and kill pathogen, pathogens in a more specific and direct way, like for example, producing antibodies for a specific pathogen, and the adaptive immunity is a more specific type of immunity. HIV in cancers have a great effect on the immune system. Cancer patients undergoing treatments such as chemotherapy and radiation therapy can become immunocompromised because of the damage to healthy dividing cells. And they can um, develop a condition that's called mucositis. In HIV positive patients, if not being treated for the condition, it can they can become immunocompromised if the condition progresses to AIDS, and they can be a, in a greater risk of developing a condition called Kaposi's sarcoma, and that's one of the signs that a patient can become immunocompromised. Mucositis is a breakdown of the epithelial cells that line the external body cavities. And to avoid this, this condition, salivary substitute can be used to avoid um, ulceration and to keep the mouth moist, and this tends to cause a lot of complications during um, cancer treatments. Carposi sarcoma is a malignant vascular cancer caused by oncogenic virus called the herpes, human herpes virus. And it's, it, it affects the lymph and blood vessel cells. They get infected and they start to divide rapidly and spread throughout the body. And one of the signs that you can see is these lesions or spots in the skin that can appear to be brown or purple. And they can also happen inter internally. And this condition can be treated taking an the antiretroviral medication. Common opportunistic infections are toxoplasmosis and candida infections. Toxoplasmosis is called by a parasite that is usually um, found in cats and it can be transmitted to humans through infected cat feces, eating undercooked contaminated meat, or mother to childhood transmission. In that case, that is known to be congenital toxoplasmosis and it can be treated using antiparasitic medications. Candida infections are fungal infections. They can be found normally on the skin and ex in external body cavities without causing any problems. For in immunocompromised patients, they can find a way to enter the body and cause se severe to mild infections, especially in cancer patients. And it can be treated using antifungal medications. Prevention of opportunistic infections is really important in cancer patients, HIV, and immunocompromised patients. And they should practice preventable methods to avoid developing unopportunistic infections, such as practicing safe sex, getting vaccines, wearing protective equipment such as gloves, taking preventable medicines if needed, like antibiotics to prevent further infections, and washing your hands often, and practice safe food preparation. Remember, prevention is key. And this concludes my presentation. Thank you for listening to me and have a great rest of your day.